What is up, y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back, me. I just got back from Charleston yesterday. Finding that hard to believe. Already feels like it's been an eternity since then. I want to start this video off with a gentle reminder that you can crop anything. You can crop anything. Even though you can't tell by my shoulders up that I have cropped this shirt, I just hope that you can feel in the spirit of this video that the shirt is cropped. Like that's the vibe we're on. So today, I don't know what's gonna happen. I got a whole bunch of new makeup. I've got new stuff from my trip, from some of the sponsors. And then I also have new stuff that I bought at Sephora out of just like pure idle curiosity. And I took some questions from y'all. This is gonna be a really chill video. The kind that a lot of y'all like where we just shoot the breeze and talk about makeup and answer some questions and mainly just hang out. So let's go ahead and jump in. I think you can tell that my voice is gone. It's gone. I've been working on this cough hard at work, hard at work on this cough for a little while now. And I, I think that we've done it. I think we've accomplished it. You know, I'm going to start off. I already have sunscreen on. I've already been oot in a boot today and I had to wash my face and start over. I know it doesn't look like it, but I feel like the status of my complexion situation, my, my acne is improving. It's improving a little bit, but I do have a big honking fresh new eyeball right there. That's a lot of fun. It's not like the stress in my life is subsiding. I did though, just get back from, like I said, I got back from Charleston. I was on the big fun creators and friends trip. Should I put on a headband? I should probably put on a headband. Let's get weird. Hell yeah. Okay. So hair out of the face, Lily Sadugi headband in full effect. So what I just started with was the dewy skin vitamin C glass glow primer from Ciate because I can't be stopped. It's just doing beautiful things on my face. Just looks really nice and it's good because it's glowy, but it still helps grip my makeup. It doesn't make it all slippy. So I'm actually gonna go with a different complexion product today than I typically would. I'm gonna go with the number one day Chanel Fond du Temps, the Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation in the shade B10, mainly because I just, I want a little more coverage and I, I thought that this would be a good way to go for it, so. Let's go. So yeah, creators and friends. This was basically for anybody who's like wondering if you're looking at it and you're like, wow, really? Like that was a, that was an influencer trip. You know, like it doesn't look like other influencer trips that I've seen online and things like that. You know, some of the ones that get a little bit more attention, maybe negatively, whatever. That's a great foundation. It's just a great foundation. The thing is this was like, it's a proof of concept. So Simbri and Samantha, Simbri of Simbri Thinks and Samantha March are basically starting, what up Nicola, what you want girl? If you haven't seen Sarah Verba's video on the upcoming Taurus New Moon, highly recommend. Hell yeah. You gotta love the friends that send you a heads up about astrology. It's just like, hey, our favorite astrologer uploaded and it's a really good video. Like that's friendship. So that was Nicola telling me that. Anyway, Simbri and Samantha are kind of starting a company. I'm guessing, you know, it's just gonna be called Creators and Friends or maybe that's the name of the event or whatever. But basically they kind of used this trip as a proof of concept for the kind of trip where it's like, not just about like we, we didn't get paid to go you know we paid our own way to get there we paid all of our own transportation and everything and that, like that was by design like we initially were planning to pay for our own accommodations and everything it was more supposed to be kind of a networking event but when they were kind of this is my understanding when they were kind of filling the goodie bags for us you know they were trying to get like brands to participate and like you know be excited about being part of the trip or whatever but like not necessarily asking for sponsorships like BK Beauty stepped in and they were like, hey, you know, like we'll be the main sponsor and we'll just like sponsor some dinners. And like, we got to meet Lisa J and stuff. And that was really, really cool. And so we got a lot of brushes. I got, thank God, you know, enabling me to never wash my brushes again because I just keep getting new brushes. It's awesome. And then there were like smaller brands that wanted to get on board. And like, we had a masterclass with ColourPop and we got a bunch of stuff from brands like this brand, Unearthly Cosmetics, brand new to me. I don't know, man, that might make its way under my eyes today. We will have to see. I do think that if it doesn't end up being my thing, one Tom, Hope Mess Tom, will probably be happy to at least test it. So I'm already kind of putting together a care package for them. I mean, not a care package, but like I got an extra one of the Laura Mercier powders that's a little bit radiant, you know, because I bought it and then they sent it to me in PR. So I'm gonna send that to them. And I don't know, I don't know, just some other stuff that I think they'll like. So anyway, yeah. That's a new to me brand that I'm like excited to stick my phalanges in. And the whole idea of it 
was to really get to like meet a lot of the creators that I get to, that I see online that I watch all the time and some that like I wasn't familiar with yet. So I'm gonna use the Beauty Pie Under Eye Corrector here. Just great, again, similar concept to that dewy primer because it's gonna give me a nice level of like hydration and color cancellation underneath my eyes, but it doesn't like disturb the makeup on top. In fact, it might help it grip a little bit more. It's a very, very good product. It's super similar to the Becca one. Yeah, I got to like, it was cool because a lot of people were just excited to see all their favorite creators in one place. And like, there were like various sizes of creators, right? You know, I'm not the biggest creator. And then Hannah hit 100,000 right before we left. So exciting. Everybody was really excited to see pregnant Hannah. And so that was cool. And she, of course, was just a goddess angel, like even more so now that she's pregnant, just like, unbelievable, just like radiant, radiant. I got, I mean, I'm not gonna, I guess I could mention everybody, there were 20 of us. So, I mean, I got to meet Makeup Just For Fun and Amy Loves Makeup and Tina of the Fancy Face. Oh my God, I got to hang out with Kelsey. I recognize her from Wayne Goss's videos. I was like, why do I know you? Oh my God, that girl, that's, that's my soulmate right there. <laughs> We were just like, <laughs> like we just like could crack each other up so much. I was like immediately obsessed with her. She has the best personality. But of course, uh, you know, Angelica was there and Jen Loves Reviews was there. And then like a bunch of people, obviously like I, 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 you know, you get kind of a chance to like invite people, right? Because it's like you're rooming with people. So you want, oh, and Lauren May was there. That was like the first person I met up with. See, I'm not gonna remember everybody. But uh, Stephanie of Beauty Unhyped, um, I invited her, and then I also invited Amanda Z. Kelly Gooch was there, Makeup Molly was there. So I was roomed with Kelly, Makeup Molly, <laughs> Molly is her name, uh, and Amanda, and we were like in this cute little attic together. It was so much fun, and I don't know. I just, I learned so much about everybody, and it's so funny because I think that a lot of people liken those kinds of trips, especially from the outside, to a lot of drama, and it was like the exact opposite. It was so, like not just chill. I wouldn't say it was chill. It was like high energy, so much fun, like just, joy just like so much love by the end of it we were all just calling each other pet names it's like good morning my love hello angel how are you my darling i'm gonna miss you so much like and i do i miss everybody it was just really really lovely and i was talking about in my aunt louisa video i was like i have not had like sisterhood in my life for pretty much my whole life and then like lo and behold i just open myself up to it and it just pours through just an avalanche of sisterhood i'm so grateful I'm using my Givenchy here. This thing hurts. I need to take like an Advil or something. I think that like she's trying to steal the show a little bit. Mm. Hallie did send me some Hero, something Hero uh, for like, there's acne patches for that specific kind of, of pimple. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. All right, let's take some questions now that we've gotten a chance to cover the, the trip. And like, I'm really excited about, you know, potential future trips because I just, I really liked the entire concept. The whole thing was very, I don't know, it was just very low pressure. And the content that we did create was, I feel like really authentic and a lot of fun. Heather Austin was there. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep remembering people. <laughs> Linda from Glitter Fallout was there. She's an absolute delight. Let's look at some questions. So what's so funny, it's not actually that funny, it was mainly just really annoying, was that last night my Instagram just decided that like it wasn't gonna tell me that it, like it was gonna tell me that it hadn't posted stories. And y'all know that's where the action is. Like I'm, I'm a stories girl. And so I was posting all these stories and then I'd like go back to see my responses or whatever and like the story wasn't there and I was like, oh. I must have pushed something weird and like not posted it. So I'll just post it again. And I could see some of my stories. And so I was like, okay, well they're there. And like that one just isn't. And then it just kept happening. And then Kelly replied to one that I couldn't see. And I was like, wait, <laughs> so they are there. I just can't see them. And so then I'm posting stories more than once. So I have two prompts for this video for questions. So hopefully we got enough because like, I did it twice and then that was the irony of it was that I couldn't take them down because I couldn't see them. I even deleted the app and re-downloaded it and then 
all my stories and everyone else's stories disappeared. So that was a crapshoot. I eventually like Googled it and they were like, go onto a desktop computer and then you can see them. And I was like, okay. And then this morning it was fixed, but that was a big old, big old annoying headache. I was already so tired. Last night was the first time that I have had a full night's sleep without any sleep aids in, I don't even know, I mean years. It was kind of amazing. I did, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Chris Corsini, but he is like an astrologer and a tarot reader on Instagram and I love his readings. He's really straightforward. He's the one that you see who does sign language the entire time while he's talking. And I did his cord cutting meditation. It was for the eclipse, but I just downloaded it. And I did that last night and I swear to God, I slept so well afterwards. <laughs> That's worth $11 of my money. So yeah, I've got stuff from Sigma. I've got, I've got like a new NARS powder. These are always the videos that are terrible to index because I never tell y'all what I have. But one of y'all actually reached out to me and told me like this was really good. This is the NARS translucent crystal light reflecting setting powder. Not sure how I feel about it yet, but we'll use it today. It's kind of almost like a highlighter for people who don't like highlighters, which I don't really like highlighters, so we'll see. And then yeah, I have some Sigma, I mean I have Sigma lip oils, I have like ColourPop palettes and stuff. I also have these Sigma cream blushes. That sounds, that sounds pretty cool. They have one called Coral Dawn. Let's see, let's see what this one's like. I didn't know Sigma did, ooh, yes. I'm wearing pink, but I don't care. I don't care, I'm still in that coral mood. That's so pretty. Ooh, what is Cor de Rosa? What is your favorite Kansas City barbecue place? Ooh, that was one of the questions. That's like the first one I see. I will say, I will tick some people off because I, after living in Kansas City and living in Texas, I literally can't open this. I don't really, and I mean, having barbecue my whole life, right? I don't think that barbecue is that different, like place to place to place. That's gorgeous. That's so beautiful. That, I stuck my fingernail in it. Okay, that's called Corderosa. Ooh, Pashmina. So yeah, just go ahead and unsubscribe now. I'm, I'm completely, like, I'm a super taster. That's my party trick, is like when you're tasting wine, I'm just like, okay, everyone, take a sip of your wine, pool toy. And everybody goes, oh my God. <laughs> like, I'm that idiot. Wait, that's beautiful too. What is the difference? What is the difference between that and Coral Dawn? Ooh, okay, so this one's a little pinker and this one's a little bit more orange. Not mad, not mad. Gonna use this probably on top of powder though. Bring back the skin texture, but I'm holding Pashmina close. That's nice. I'm gonna actually use my Kosas powder here and I'm gonna pretty much use it everywhere. I've been on a little bit more of like a matte, mattified train lately. It's kind of funny. I think that Kelly talks about that, how it's like actually you end up doing more cream looks during the winter and more powdered looks during the summer. Or maybe that's me. Maybe that's a thought that I had inside my own head. Maybe it's both. I don't know. I don't even know what day it is right now. But I would say that if I had to pick my favorite Kansas City place, it would be uh, Oklahoma Joe's. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, you go in there and you get one of those, you know, it's like a bun, like a bun with a whole bunch of pork on it or something. I don't even remember. I haven't lived in Kansas City since 2010. So it's been a long time, but Oklahoma Joe's is the one for me. Like if I went back, that's where I'd go. Powder. Do I have a tan? Like what happened? I look like I have a tan. I don't think I have a tan. I certainly didn't try to get a tan. I actively tried not to get a tan. So I'm gonna use, I don't have like a bronzer that's new, but I haven't been using powder bronzer that much. I've mainly been using this, y'all. First day on the trip, I panned this. I hit pan on it and the pan is expanding quickly. This is the Makeup by Mario, but I'm not gonna use that today because I just powdered, but I am gonna use my Gucci one because it makes me feel fabulous. And that's how I wanna feel right now. I wanna feel fabulous right now. Since female friends are a newer phenomenon in your life, what was the journey to get to that point? EMDR. That is not a style of music. That is not a drug. It is a type of therapy that you find a therapist who is qualified in it, qualified, certified, whatever. It's so cool. It's like this, it's very, it's very like simple in concept and very effective. And I've heard, you know, pretty much nothing but good things about it. So I probably, yeah, I have them right here. I'll show you. So these are called Theratappers and it's just this little thing. 
I know it looks like Scientology, but it's not. There's no, this doesn't receive any information. It's not like you know, tell us your deepest darkest secret and then we'll hold it against you forever. You know, it's not that. It's just these two little things that you hold in your hand like this, and then all this box does is control the like rapidness of these things kind of just vibrating back and forth back and forth and you just hold them in your in your hand and they just go buzz 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 and what it's doing is it's i mean i think that like it's mainly just distracting your brain so that you have to kind of think a little bit harder and it puts you in a different mindset while you're kind of traveling back through trauma. And that's why you have to have somebody who's certified in it is because there's like a very specific way that they help you track back through trauma that doesn't like re-traumatize you. It does it in a way that's like, I don't know. There's a specific like conversation pathway that they use to help make sure that you kind of stay on the rails essentially. But it is, it is intense because you are kind of traveling back through old traumas, but it's supposed to simulate rapid eye movement. And so it's supposed to put your brain almost in like the place where you are when you're like at a certain stage of sleep. And in so doing, it takes something that is like right in your like front of your brain all the time, like a trauma that kind of pops up constantly. Literally my therapist had me go watch Inside Out and she was like, you know, it's like taking it from being a core memory to just putting it in the library. You're not gonna forget about it, but it stops being something that comes up constantly when it doesn't need to. And when I did EMDR about some of just the, I mean, I'm not gonna talk about why, you know what I mean? But like uh, the blocks that I had around female friendship, it helped me really unpack it and make room for it. And it's actually really interesting the way that, you know, life works, right? Where it's like, when you start to make room for it, it all, it just, it all just floods in. It's almost like people, their spirits have been like waiting for the opening, right? And I'm just, I always say this, but I'm so grateful for the women in my life who have done more than halfway. You know what I mean? That have just like seen me, seen the connection, the potential connection that we had and are better at, like better skilled at being friends than I was. And so they were able to be more confident in pursuing a friendship with me. And that's like why I even gained any confidence in making female friends to begin with was because people like Rachel, Rachel Ellen Rose, or like Ingrid, you know, made the effort to like take the extra steps to be like, I know it's hard, but you can trust me kind of thing, you know? And if I talk about it too long, I'll cry because female friendship is the meaning of life. Kiki, Kiki did the same thing. So anyway, yeah. And I think that it forges really, really strong bonds. I'm using, my, normally this goes to the end, this is like something I saved to the end, but I'm using my Natasha Nona Contour Sculpt Powder because we're just doing a kind of powder first look here. But like still, look how radiant my skin is from the Chanel Foundation, a different Chanel Foundation, the Revitalizing Foundation. The number one day Chanel is an exclusive to Ulta, by the way. I'm being super, super gentle here. I don't want like a really strong contour, not yet. Yeah, that and the Kosas powder. Ooh, my goodness, that's pretty. Well, and, and the Givenchy concealer. I look so tan. What is going on? I mean, I know I just bronzed the heck out of myself, but I feel like I looked tan before I even like put that on. Beach girl who? Me, apparently. I'm feeling very, this is a very Charleston outfit, but like Charleston meets khaki, you know what I mean? It's like just below the camera's view. I'm just like cropped and I'm wearing leggings. Just like so chaotic, okay. So, I want one of the ColourPop palettes. I know, right? Me, ColourPop, hang on. So they gave us two during the master class. One of them is the Bare Necessities palette, which I have not even gotten to touch yet because they also gave us another one that I ended up getting just really into. Ooh, I love the texture on this. It feels like actual like pebbled leather, that's nice. So everybody really fell in love with this. And I think that I kind of was into this color story when it came out anyway, because it's just very me. But as much as there's like pink inks and some kind of warm tones in here, there's nothing that's really like peach in the way that I would want right now. Although actually I think that like in in practice, like these shades right here are gonna go pretty peach on me. I have to kind of adjust my eyes to 
I don't know, like how fair I actually am. And so it's like the colors that look really desaturated, they're probably gonna still show up pretty vivid on me. But this is the other one that they gave us, Heavy Petal. And I went pretty, I went pretty big into this one. I like it because it's just got some good, like vivid peachy colors in there. And that gold is really pretty too. But yeah, let's go and just do some basic stuff here. I'm gonna actually, excuse me, I'm gonna start with the Hindesh Color Fluid and Canvas just as my eye base. And we will answer another question and kind of dip into these shades. Actually juicy, why, because I said juicy questions. Why did you make that recent video private? I think you're referring to, what was that? It was two, it was Wednesday's video, last Wednesday's video. Not last, no, two Wednesdays ago, because I've been gone this week. And it's something that happens all the time. <laughs> it's not still down, it's up now, but like it really is so common that like, especially as I speak so candidly on my channel, I was, I was just talking about kind of a touchy subject and I said something that is very easily misconstrued. And I, as soon as I heard that, like I saw it from their perspective, I was like, okay, well, I don't want to hurt people, you know, even if, even if like, I'm being misunderstood, it doesn't matter. It's like my intentions aren't, aren't the point. And that, I mean, that literally, y'all, when you're uploading as much as I do or, you know, any full-time creator does, like, and you're kind of just, you know, being candid, it happens all the time. And you just, uh, YouTube has the ability to let you take clips out of your videos. And so I just took it down long enough to have the edits go through because YouTube takes forever to process those kinds of changes. And as soon as that part of the video was taken out, I, I put it back up. I, I, I mean, it's seriously like, like it is such a byproduct of, you know, kind of not, not being scripted. You know, you just kind of say stuff and you're like, yeah, 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 no, that made perfect sense to me. And then you hear it and you kind of hear it through somebody else's ears. Like it's impossible to get outside of yourself. You know, like it's, I think that that's one of the hardest things in the entire world is to get outside of yourself. And so, you know, it's just a humbling thing that you, that you have to go through as a creator where you go, oops. <laughs> I said something that did not come out the way I meant it. I'm gonna take it down so people don't get hurt, basically. <laughs> All right, well, that's not sticking super well. I'm actually pleased that the shade is not as like dark as I thought it was going to be. This is the shade Hustler. I got so many new brushes, a new travel set from BK. Love to see it. Someone just said, I got way too drunk at book club. I didn't know if you thought that this was a confessions prompt, but like more power to you. Like, tell me everything. Who would you pick from the trip to be your makeup artist, stylist, home designer, etc.? Ew. Okay, that's a fun question. What a fun question. What a good little thought experiment. Because there were there were twenty girls, twenty. Well, I think twenty one total. I know exactly who I'd pick to be my makeup artist, and that would be Lauren May. She did Simbri's makeup a couple of times while we were there. And everything from the way that it actually ended up looking to just the way that she like moves when she does makeup, like it's just so like gentle and natural. I just, I don't know. I just got totally mesmerized watching her do makeup. And I just loved the looks that she did on Simbri. They were just so like soft and beautiful, but also like really like, rich and gorgeous and like sexy, you know? She knows what she's doing. I mean, these girls all do. And I think that if I had to pick a stylist, it would be Kelsey. <laughs> because every time we stepped out of our bedrooms, we'd go, <gasps> like we were wearing something so similar, except she just took it, oh my God. She had, there was one night y'all, where she was wearing this like puff dress, kind of like a selkie dress, and then these big like rhinestoned like pastel rainbow earrings. She had her hair pulled back with this big like puffy ponytail and these gorgeous like rhinestone heels on and her makeup was so ethereal, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it like off the charts. At so many points we were just like, you get it, like you get me, you get it. Like she just, she has a vision. She. That girl has a vision, okay? She has a vision the way that I have visions where it's like, oh, I see a whole drag persona associated with this look, you know? Like that's, I just, I felt like if I, if I had to hire someone rather than just deferring to my own brain, if I had to collaborate with someone on fashion, it would definitely be Kelsey. Ooh, wait, full expose? Look at how smoothing that is. I haven't loved every shade. They all kind of behave a little differently, but like that's really nice because 
is just kind of high pigment and it's setting everything. Let's get into some browns. I feel like this is just like kind of not giving what I thought it was going to. Is luxury everything always better? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Can I think of an example of something that's better that, well, yeah, I mean, this right here, this is, <laughs> I know this has become like my thing now. I find one drugstore thing and I can't shut up about it, but this Revolution palette is like my happy place. It's not just my comfort zone, it's my happy place. I also think that a lot of times like, you know, luxury doesn't necessarily stack up to the price point. You're looking at somebody like Tom Ford. Now, not to say that I'm never gonna buy anything from Tom Ford again, because I am still waiting on that lip gloss, that rose lip gloss to exist in the US. I want to know because I love a luxury experience and that's why I'm here to test them to tell you whether they're worth it. But I definitely don't think like all of Tom Ford's stuff is worth the Tom Ford price tag. He puts such a high price on it that it's like, you know, he almost have trouble being good enough. I don't know, I don't know. I'm having trouble getting all this stuff to kind of stick the way that I want it to. I mean, these colors are pretty, but like, I'm not, I don't feel like they're really working with me. And we're kind of getting this like patchiness. I think I'm gonna, well, I gotta do the same thing on the other eye, the rule of Tate. But home design, I don't really know because I don't think that there was like that much expression in that respect that I would have gotten to see necessarily. I know that if I was gonna hire somebody to help me with my audio visual, it would be Shelly Saves the Day, good grief. She is such a deep font of knowledge. I think half the battle with that kind of stuff is confidence and like somebody telling you like, hey, you know, actually just keep working with it. You got this, you're not a failure for not understanding this, goes a long way. I need to know Bosma or Merit. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Okay, what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna like go in with my bronzer and my contour on my eyes be and, and then we'll go in with some blush because this is just not working. So, uh, Bosma. I mean, first of all, like, let's just go ahead and say, say what it is. Bosma, 100%. So, the Bosma Foundation, I think, is still the only thing that Bosma makes. And it's... It's so, I mean, we were all raving about it. It was me and Tina, Steph? I don't remember, and maybe Laura, I can't remember who all was in the car with us, but a bunch of people with different skin types, different skin tones, different skin ages, different skin needs, were all talking about how good that Bosma is. And I will tell you, the time Simbri came to visit me, she and Hannah came, we were killing time until Hannah got here. I was putting on a face of makeup, sitting on the floor in front of that mirror right there, because if I were not a YouTuber, I need y'all to know, I am a floor makeup girly. I just am. Some people are like, bathroom makeup girly, so I'm a floor makeup girly. So I was on the floor doing it and the lighting is not spectacular over there, but I was just kind of trusting the process. And I was using the Merit, I was using the Merit stick. I was like, I really need to get my head around this and like get a you know firm opinion on it. I got up and looked in the mirror and I said, I gotta go wash my face and start over. It looked so bad. I don't like it and, and I don't know what your skin tone is, but me and Simbri went into Sephora in the city at one point and we were just swatching everything and she's native Alaskan so she has this really unique skin I mean not to say that everybody has the same skin tone but she's a very unique skin tone where it's like medium cool like blue cool and so she was swatching all the medium shades uh, then there are tons, you know, from Merit, and they were all like wildly hot orange. So I've heard that they do well for skin tone matches for like olive, which is hard to find in other lines, which, you know, fantastic, but like nothing for cool tones, at least not in the medium category, so. All right, am I gonna be putting any of these like mattes on my eyes today? Probably not, probably not, but I think we can use one of these as a topper. Ooh, that's cute, that's cute. I think that that's Hydro Space. That's gonna look cute with this. So this is the Don't Be Jelly, Jellyfish. Ooh, cute palette. And throughout the whole trip after we got these, you'd be like sitting there talking to somebody and you'd be like, what is on your eyes? And they're like, it's that palette we got, you know? So, very exciting. Ooh, that is so pretty. That's actually easier to wear than I thought. We were actually, I was talking to Angie about it because Angie is like the queen of an indie shadow. Angelica Nickvist, she's, yeah, she's amazing. So I guess they, someone mentioned, invoked my video of the one I collaborated with Tom because Tom had me buy a bunch of Cleona shadows and just like the level of overwhelm that I experienced where I was just like, but I don't, 
I don't understand, like I can't name the colors that it's all shifting. Like my brain was just fritzing. I couldn't handle it. So they were all laughing at me, but in a good way, in a lighthearted way. I'm okay with it. Like I understand that this isn't my thing, but that's super pretty, super, super pretty. Yeah, I wonder if I could get away with this coral shade, just a little bit of it, maybe on the outer corner. It's literally called coral. What turns you off from other people? A type you just don't gel with, rational or irrational? <laughs> this is another invitation to get, you know, misunderstood, I think, but because it's like you're kind of talking in generalizations. I would say that like my only, my only big like frustration that I feel like I really don't gel with aside from somebody just, you know, kind of being in a, a nightmare part of their life, you know, where they're just like kind of like competitive and aggressive the moment that they meet you and they've just decided they don't like you. Like you can't really fix that in someone else. You just kind of, you know, just let them live. But I would say that like the most difficult kind of person for me is someone who, and again, this could be just like a season in their life kind of thing, but like someone who kind of constantly wants to squash your inspiration and your motivation. Like I, I've encountered people like that in my life where they're kind of intimidated by bigger ideas and they'll always kind of try and talk you out of your own potential or like teach you, try and try and get you to like lower your standards for yourself. And it's not even that I like can't be around them. I just am like, mm, this is not, this is not a particularly like useful relationship for me to pursue with someone else right now. Those Formulas stick. That's great. Those are really nice. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I would be interested to try these formulas in some more tame color stories because that's that's a really easy formula to work with. That's so nice. This is literally a first impression for me on this. Ooh, maybe we will go in with the dark shade that's in here. It's called sea urchin. I mean, it's wild, not wild in the sense that like nobody can wear it. I'm saying it's wild for me, but you know, I don't know. Deep purple, let's go. Just right on the outer corner and in this little spot right here. Oh no, it's just makeup. Little goes a long way, but it spreads really easily. Ooh, okay on Earthly Cosmetics. That's like way easier to work with than the ColourPop shadows. ColourPop does not need my endorsement, okay? Like me saying the ColourPop didn't work for me in that particular instance is not going to hurt ColourPop's bottom line. Y'all know exactly what a color pop shadow behaves like, okay? <laughs> They're good. It just wasn't doing what I was doing. I'm using a little bit of that coral shade up here now that I trust it. Because it's kind of giving. I will say spending uh, like four days in a house with a bunch of girls, you do start to pick up their like turns of phrase. <laughs> We all sounded we all sounded the same by the end of it. It was really funny. Yeah, I picked up a little bit more of coral coral. I'm putting it underneath hair. It's just good. Okay, that's just good. It's like easy to get carried away with because it's just good. Ooh, ooh. Tom, you're not getting this from me, but maybe this is something to spend your budget on. Yeah, no, I'm keeping this one. Very. <laughs> Very. Just realized I'm not talking because I'm just enjoying this. Kind of got distracted, didn't I? It's so intoxicating when a formula works with you, you know, and you don't feel like you're kind of rubbing a hole in your eye trying to get it to blend. I hope it looks okay. It looks good in person. So I'm gonna use some of that NARS powder and I'm gonna put that kind of in the eye look to finish out the, the top here without adding like something really distracting but I'm thinking that that's like gonna be a good use case for this formula. It's a nice cleanup formula that adds a little bit of luminosity. Ooh, and it's so smooth, wait. Now I did use this before and I used it on top of something that was a little bit more wet and I don't really think that's what it's for. I don't think it's necessarily like a setting powder. They call it a light, they do call it a light reflecting setting powder. Okay, well. I know nothing apparently, but it's just blurring as all get out. And I'm putting it on underneath. Ooh, it's so blurring. Mm. That's nice. That's kind. Of, that's kind of really nice, y'all. I could just. I could just be wrong. Like I'm okay with being wrong, especially when I misjudge something in a negative way. 
Those shifts are wild. It looks like there's like a line going down my eyelid. That's so wild. Okay, I think we're gonna do some blush next and then I'll kind of do a break while I do my like eyeliner and stuff. Today though, we're gonna be using the Hindash eyeliner. I'm back on the Hindash eyeliner. I want a little bit more graphic of a line lately. That's just, it's just how I feel. We have a brand new BK101. Oh. Just take a moment to appreciate the softness. And then we're gonna stick it in this product right here. So again, this is Pashmina. I've already done my bronzer and my contour. So we're really just going for a local color here. Look at that. Look at that springtime. Ooh wee. It is pink. It is pink. Here I was. Actually, I, it, compared to the eye look, it does have a touch of a little tiny bit of yellow, you know. It's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad. Applies really, really beautifully, really easily on top of the powder. No complaints. I probably will pull out the one that's a little bit more subtle so that it'll kind of balance it out a little bit. Y'all should have seen Kelly, Kelly Gooch. When I took the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand and just put three big old dots on the middle of my forehead, she goes, she goes, is that gonna turn out cute? <laughs> I love the way that she phrased it. It was so funny. We were laughing so hard at that. I did end up putting on too much. Like I ended up taking a little bit of it off, but yeah, I think it turned out cute. There was Coral Dawn, so pretty. And then the other one was what? Mmm, that's nice. I feel like it's gonna make things muddy though, because that was the shade uh, Corderosa. We're gonna, we're gonna just use a little bit of this. and see if it's adding a little bit more dimension. Oh, that's so summery. And then also, again, it adds just enough of something that's not so on the nose pink that it, it went straight to sunburn in like the best way possible. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know why I look so saturated. Usually when I'm shooting raw like this, like what I see in my viewfinder is like straight up gray, you know? And then like I, I see the results when I actually like get it in post, but this is, this is looking really like, vibrant. So I will say, I don't know if I need to like dermaplane up here. All my hair fell out, but apparently I'm still a mammal. And it just seems like stuff is starting to like really catch right there. And so like the cream on top of the powder, they didn't have a love affair. Okay. Right there at the top of my cheeks. So it'll probably even itself out. It does tend to do that as the makeup kind of like chills for a minute. So I'm going to do my brows and my eyeliner and my mascara and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some lips. some lip liners. I'm gonna go find them. So BK gave us all this cute, you know, very sorority kind of stuff. I definitely felt like we were in a sorority house. I got my cute little mug with my name on it. And we have O oh Snap, which could work. Keep that out. Something lost a lid. No, I don't want to stick my fingernail in it. And this is Ashton. Ooh, that's party. Very party, but like losing a lid is kind of the kiss of death, so to speak, for a ColourPop anything because they tend to be prone to drying out. 
I kind of think Ashton is gonna be better. That might be it on the lip liners. I really thought I had more. Let's see. That's kind of badass. Okay. Cool. And then I have these Sigma lip oils. One in the shade Tint, as it were, and one in the shade Hush. So let's, oh man, ooh, that's pretty. And then, oh, that's just clear. Let's try the colored one. Let's try this really pretty kind of like, you know, mauvey brown. Ooh. Oh, okay, khaki, calm down. They don't smell like anything. Pretty. Ooh, they feel really good. They go well with that lip liner. I'm just gonna kind of blend the lip liner in. How nice is that? All right. I'm gonna give this a spritz now that my eyelashes are dry. All right. Ooh. Oh, I feel like I feel like I'm kind of channeling Tom in their recent recent their recent video their recent video about not wearing pink, but like then they piled all the pink makeup on their face. I think we need just a little more contour right at the top because I'm feeling self-conscious about my hair loss. Now, I do feel like the hair is lost. I don't think it's getting worse, which is good. I'm on my Nutrafol. As I was like putting my mascara on, I was like, is Nutrafol helping with my eyelashes? Cause they look great. But yeah, I don't really want to draw attention to this like glowing line at the top of my hair. It's probably something only I notice, but whatever. I don't know, I, like oddly enough, somehow like this very, I think dramatic in concept eye look ended up quite chill and wearable. I don't know. I really love this. I love the way that it turned out. It did have its moments of being not that, not that easy to do, but let's chat through the products here and uh, give you all my, my preliminary thoughts on them because I think I got a good idea of how these perform. So we used mainly stuff that I would typically use for like my base and everything, although I haven't been pulling this as much recently. I've been pulling this Chanel foundation, the Sublimage Le Tain. I have to say, we might be uh, back on this wagon for a little while. I just really like how it covered. I like how it covered and I like how it held powder. This is much more hydrating. I want the hydration, I do, but I want the coverage right now because my skin is just like, you know, 18 different colors and it's just like way better for my personal confidence to have a little bit more coverage, but this is still not matte. It's got a nice like natural radiance to it. And gosh darn it, I paid $70 for it and I own it so I should use it. So I think that this might be making its way into heavy rotation soon. Obviously the Givenchy concealer, like all these things have become part of my everyday routine because they're meeting my needs right now. They're doing the double duty of being like long wearing and you know, pretty good coverage while also having like a really nice skin-like looking like healthy radiant finish to them that still wears a long time and isn't you know sliding all over my face all the time. So let's talk about the new stuff that I used. Let's talk about this first because wow, like are these necessarily colors that I would gravitate towards? No, especially because there's something about my brain that I don't understand this, this is so stupid, but like I look at a palette that's unintimidating like this or the other one that I was using. The How do you lose a palette that big khaki? The other one, the neutrals one that I was using. And I look at that and I go, well, I could use any of those, but I'm not gonna use them all at one time. I don't feel intimidated by it because I know I'm not gonna use all of them on my eyes in one day. And for whatever reason, I look at this and I go, well, I mean, gosh, like, that's what my eyes are gonna look like if I use this. It's like, no, you don't use every single one of them at the same time khaki. I don't know why I have like much more like fear about something that has all these colors in it when nobody's like twisting my arm making me use them all at the same time, you know? So anyway, once I got in here, the multi-chromes are so beautiful and so easy to use and it's just a really fantastic formula. And then I ended up, after putting all that color Rob eyeshadow on my eyes, I ended up feeling like this was far more my comfort zone just because the formulas behaved so well. And I'm not trying to crap on ColourPop. Y'all know a ColourPop shadow is a ColourPop shadow. It just behaves a certain way. And like, I think I was just looking for something that was a little bit more like creative and artistic and like these lent themselves to that. This is, again, it's unearthly cosmetics and like, I just, that's, that's a fantastic formula. I wanna try more stuff from them. I need to look at their offering because I would be very interested to try any color story that they have because the formulas are so easy to work with. 
that's a very pleasant, happy, not even surprise, just I didn't know what I was gonna get. You know what I mean? It's brand new to me. So loving the eye look that I achieved with that. Love these Sigma blushes. I'm trying to figure out what they remind me of because they're really jelly. Like they're super lightweight. They remind me of the Melt Cosmetics ones that I love so much, the blush lights. That's what they remind me of. They're so much like the blush lights. Ooh, yes. Yeah, and the blush lights don't, I mean, I wouldn't say that these are the ones that I have are necessarily cool toned, but like that was something that frustrated me about all the blush lights because I bought all of them, was that there weren't very many cool tones in there. There were no cool tones in there really. And I wouldn't, I don't know whether this one does or not, but it's just a whole new grouping of colors, you know, uh, to try. And it just, it reminds me so much of the blush lights, which is a high, high compliment coming from me. I need to pull those back out if they're not like expired because we are back into like summer skinville and I'm ready, I'm ready for some melt blush lights. Isn't it hilarious? The amount of things that live in my brain about formulas, like I'm touching it and like my brain just goes and like has to like think through everything I've ever tried and it's just like touching that. I was just like, whoop, that's so Raven moment or whatever. Yeah, either way, that's crazy. I haven't thought about those blushes in a really long time until I just touched that one and I was like, ah, melt blush lights. The lip liners from ColourPop, again, I don't really feel like anybody needs a review on a ColourPop formula from me unless it's like a brand new formula. Their lip liners are great, they're fine. You know what I mean? They're, they're good, they dry out if you leave them open, so I might be, I might be heckin' screwed on that because I don't know if that lid came with me from Charleston, I have no idea, but I liked the color. And these lip oils from Sigma are so pretty, oh my gosh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep these around because I mean, <laughs> you're never going to, you know, get me saying a bad thing about just like a good clear lip oil, okay? And like this is, if it behaves like the colored one, like it's a good clear lip oil. Like I just, I really liked it. And again, this shade tint, awesome. Cause there's a milkiness to it. So I feel like anybody could get a really nice level of tint from it. Now it might do something like the white ring of death if I talk, you know, talk in them for an hour or something, but it's a nice lightweight lip gloss type oil. And I like it a, a lot. So Sigma, you know, back when I was using Sigma, they were like all brushes. And I am just very impressed with the makeup now that they're doing the makeup. And there's stuff that I didn't get to show y'all today just because there's only so many products I can put on my face at one time. And one of them is that BK just came out with new lipsticks. So maybe I'll do like a, like, I don't know, maybe I'll do a swatching video on Instagram or something of those, but we'll use those in a future video or something. I also got a ton of lashes from BK and they actually gave us eyelash glue this time because your girl doesn't own eyelash glue. So that was kind of a hard thing for me to, you know, test. Anyway, I think that this gave me exactly what I needed, which is just kind of this like saccharine sweet surprise of a look. I just ended up being something that did exactly what I needed it to do, which is like not be exactly what I usually do, but also make me feel really cute. So it is the cropped pink and white button down of a makeup look if you will, and I don't blame you if you want. So anyway, I super appreciate y'all just, you know, being, being willing to hang out with me and just, you know, play with makeup because I could not summon a high concept from myself today. It's been a long and wonderful week, but I uh, thank y'all for being here. And uh, if you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if y'all did. And I'll put a video up here that I think you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. And I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>